So dear class, welcome to publish this lesson for today. We are covering population structure as part of our continuing series for population geography this semester. So when we talk of population structure, we are referring to the makeup of a population, i.e. the age and sex. We know that the structure of a population has got implications for future growth and economic development as well as social policy of the country. Because if the population of the nation has more females than males, then it means that the social policy of the country will change. That's why you say that in places where, like China, where they have a one-child policy, it is affecting its population structure. Because it has been reported that population structure in China is skewing towards more females than more males than females because people are endeavoring to produce boys than girls. You know, if someone gets pregnant, he goes to hospital and he checks that he has a baby girl, they tend to abort instead of keeping the baby. So sex structure of a population it refers just to the expression of male to female proportions. Like if someone says that the population sex structure of Uganda is two females to one male, it means that for every two females you come across, there is one male behind them. So it means that the, the population of females is higher or more than double the ones of males. How do we measure sex structure of a population? We measure it. There are three measures. We have masculinity proportion, we have sex ratio, and then we have excess or deficit of of males in a population. Masculinity proportion it simply looks at sex composition of a population in terms of proportion of males in population, i.e. given by the formula which we have in the notes, i.e. masculinity proportion equals population of males over total population times k, where pm is population of males, pt is total population, k is a constant. For example, we are example if we say we have forty-one million five hundred and seventy-four thousand males, females are fifty-three, then we feed that into the formula and we get masculinity proportion as forty-three. We shall get masculinity proportion as forty-three point five. So out of that calculation, we realize that fifty percent is the point of balance of sexes on the standard. A figure that is higher than 50% shows an excess of males. So when you look at the figure, the one with the earlier one, 43.5%, it means that there is a deficit of males in that population. But once the figure goes beyond 50, then it means there is excess of males. So that is one of the measures that we use to measure masculinity proportion, to measure sex ratio of, of a given population, sex structure. And then the other measure is sex ratio. And this sex ratio simply refers the ratio of males to females per population. Or it's the number of males per 100 females. Per 100 females, you count 1, 2, 3, 5, up to 100 females. How many males do you have out of that 100? And here, the formula is once again given as general sex ratio equals total population of males over total population of females times K, which is a constant. And therefore, that constant is 100. So when we feed in the information, as in the example that we have, we check in the notes, we have the example there, we get an answer of 95.557 per 100. So it means that for every 100 females, there are 95 males. But if you group a population in a cohort, that you have 100 females, in that 100 females, there are 95 males. So it, that is a measure of sex structure. But note must be taken that if the number of males is 100, there are 100 males for 100 females. So when you, if you calculate general sex ratio and the answer comes as 100, it also implies that the number of males in that population are 100 per 100. And therefore, is an even equation over there. 100 is the point of balance of sexes, and if you get a figure above 100, it means 
there are more males than females according to sex general sex ratio and as you move to adult ages of course one thing that you notice is that the population of males is less than a hundred since there are more females than males i already made note to you this one when we were just beginning this course that men tend to die early compared to women one of the issues of course we have discussed them during when we discussed the mortality rates one of the issues that for us we are too daring we, we, we get involved in men get involved in dangerous behavior quite often a lot of you are involved in dangerous behavior but the other one is what john grant did adduce to that more females visit the doctor than males so you guys when you fall sick you just say my body will fight this off my body will fight off this you, you've seen on the road women are more careful drivers than men so these are some of the issues that bring about this discrepancy in the number in the sex structure of a population in among the older age groups because you can go to as you move to the age group 60 and above you find that there are more women in that age group than men then we have also what we call sex ratio at birth and under sex ratio at birth this one relates male birth to female birth in a given population for example here we are considering how many females are born and how many males are born at birth the, what's the sex ratio at birth you're looking at children when they are born and here we say that the world the, the general figure around the world is 100 males per male birth per 100 female birth so what's like here you realize that people tend to produce more males than females but as the population as we progress through the different age groups this structure changes to favor females like I have already mentioned that for men you will get involved in very many dangerous behaviors and so eventually even when it comes to times of war men will go to the front line so they will die off but at birth more boys are born than girls what are some of the uses of sex ratio at birth it is needed in calculations in situations where birth have to be separated into male and female birth e.g. if the number of birth is 25,000 we may want to know how many boys or girls are were born out of that out of that total number of birth for example if sex ratio at birth is 103 males per 100 female birth then we can use sex ratio to find out how many boys and girls form the total number of birth in the population for example we get 103 plus 100 which is equal to 203 that is the total birth so when we get 103 over 203 times the total number of birth which you have already mentioned for example in the area up here then the answer will become 12,803.4 so those will, and the number of males male, male ch children because the other the other figure which i've already mentioned is a measure the 100 the, the, the 103 and 100 those figures there it's what we call a measure like a sample it's not the total birth so when you get those figures and now you feed into the equation you will get the exact number of male birth because it's like someone saying that you're measuring mortality and you say that maternal maternal mortality are 19 mothers per 1000 it doesn't mean that it's only 19 mothers who are dying in a day no that is per 1000 hmm, women undergoing childbirth so if you add up a total for example the total is maybe the total birth in the whole country in one day is one million it means that the number of women maternal death it is not going to be 19. so that's what must be explained in this issue in, the, in this example given here that when you get 103 over 203 times 25,000, you get the exact number of male birth and so is the exact number of females Sex ratio at birth varies between 102 and 107 males per 100 females female birth. So if sex ratio has a fixed value, for example, 105, then this can be used as a simple model for evaluation. Factors which affect sex ratio at birth, one of them is migration. This is the movement of people. All of us know we see that more men are usually involved in migration, and that usually affects sex ratio of the areas of origin because if the males move away from an area it means in that area is left with men with with females alone you go to an area where men have moved to urban centers to go and look for employment 
and they have lost their wives in the bed. So you go to an, in such an area, you find that there will be more females than males when you visit it. So it's the case of wars and deadly activities which men engage in. I've already talked about this. Men tend to be, even even in the army, women are rare at the front line. It's men who are, who are put to the front line because they like daring things. And we have natural factors where men die more and the younger compared to women. Natural factors. Probably someone was joking that the reason as to why we die early is because we are the men. We marry women. If women were the ones marrying us and we had become women, they would also be dying early because someone saw so someone was joking that our dying early, part of the reason is the women, that the women are the problems that cause us to die quite early. Of course that is a joke. You don't have to to hold on to it. The other definition of population structure is age structure. We use age also to determine a population structure. And the age structure is usually the expression of the number of people of the total population found in each age group. There are usually three age group age group divisions. Usually three. We know like when you're growing up, we have the youth. And the, our definition of youth in population geography is not the, the one you guys know in your government. I know some of you have just stood for elections to be elected as youth representatives. But our definition of youth here we are looking at people below 16. And then we have adults, people between 16 and 64. I know some of you, even when you are six, some of you, most of you are 22, 23, but you still look at yourself as children. You are not children, you are adults. And then we have the aged, i.e. 65. Plus. So we realize that some populations usually have the, are usually young and they have large proportions of young people, like in the case of Uganda here. And why do you think he, people power is, is making him say to, to have sleeplessness because you know people power is appealing to young people and that population has got a high population of younger people. So, but that was, has got an implication. It's not something to, 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 to to celebrate about that it has got several implications if there's the implications of course you know it's the high dependence burden most of you here you are dependent on people and yet we are class we classify as being adults being people should be able to fetch for themselves so other populations are relatively old if you could go to countries like many countries in europe the reason that's why coronavirus has ravaged in europe and america is because these these are nations which are made up of large proportions of old people and this virus Quite, quite, quite often was has affected more old people than younger ones because old people have other many other illnesses that that the virus just comes to to finish them off. So you realize that in Europe and the, and the Americas there are a lot of old people in the population. That's why even when you draw the population pyramid, because for us we can graphically represent a population structure of a nation by using a population pyramid. When you do a population pyramid of, you say, Uganda and the one of, say, Germany, you realize that the one of Uganda is broad-based, implying that there are a lot of people in the first age, in the lower age groups. Whereas for Germany, you'll find that it shrinks at the, at the bottom because they are young people. People are producing fewer children, but then they have a lot of people are living lay up to later years in their, their life. You'll find that people, a lot of people are in the age bracket 60 plus 5 plus than you have people in, in the age bracket less than 16. So many developing, developing countries of the world, 40% or more is less than 15 in terms of population, and only 4% is over 65. In the developing, developing world, you, go, you you look around your village where you come from and see how many people in that village, if you can go there, you can count them on your fingertips, people who are above 65. And we must also be self-thankful to God because this idea has improved. Formerly it was not there. People used to die at 42. But of recent, our life expectancy has increased, has, has improved in Uganda. And that's why we, we, these days you find you yourself burying a 70-year-old. It was not there. We were burying people 42, 45, 45, 35, like that. During the time when the pandemic, the, 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 the HIV AIDS pandemic was here on young people. Before people learned how to live responsible lives. I know you haven't learned up to this time, but I hope you as my students will take this as serious. So you realize that the problem out of population, this kind of population structure is a high dependence burden. So the dependence ratio, like we define it here, is the number of persons in the population who are not economically active. For, for every 100 that are economically active, 
in your population. You re, some of you, you are first born in your homes, you are going to graduate, and then you will take up responsibility of everybody in your home, including your parents. You know, sometimes our parents also quite often become dependents, more so when they grow up. So we, there is a high dependence burden in places like Uganda, developing world, Sub-Saharan Africa, Latin America, parts of Asia, because of the younger population. Younger population, people who are not yet economically active. Some of you, you are 23, you are 25, but you are not economically active. You have even never earned money that you can call your own money. So you realize that you are there. You are dependent, 100%. Even air time, you must ask for some, from someone. I'm only I'm giving their time. I know it's an expensive thing, but you must ask for someone. So you realize that there's a high dependence burden in places like Africa. They are, we have some examples in the notes. You look at them. I uh, will calculate dependence burden. The dependence ratio, for example, is the number of persons who are active economically, who are inactive economically over the number of people who are active. Please, this active here, I'm referring to economics. Uh, I know it is Zimla and, the, and the Makumbi, you may think I'm referring to, to another type of activeness. I'm referring to economically active, okay? In the 1996 census, for example, population of Uganda aged between 0 to 14 was 440,000. It's 4,404,291. But plus 65 and plus was only 365,400. 65. So you realize that you, you get the people who are 65 and above and the ones who are less than 14, you add them up and then over the number of economical active people because those ones who are above 65, they are also retired. That is if they have been in, in, in civil employ, employment. But even if they are just farmers, they have become too weak to, to, to continue to support themselves. So they become part of the burden. And therefore, that's why we must continue. They, they become part of the burden. Then, how do we define age in a population? Age is another characteristic of a population. Like I've already said, it's one of the definitions of population structure. But how do we define it? Because age is one of the most sensitive issues here. If I, for example, that I, I carried out a poll right now and I started asking you, what is your, how old are you, how old are you? I know not many of you are going to tell me your age. You will start lying. You will have people keep every day. They will start telling you, "I'm celebrating my 22nd birthday." You know, people like staying at 25. Which how many years? I'm making 25. First, you say you will stay. You continue staying 16, 16, sweet 16, sweet 16. Then you reach 25. You don't want to live 25. You reach 28. You don't want to change because part it sounds like eh, it's a huge figure. Most if you are not yet married, so you realize that people struggle to tell age, and it's not only among young people. Because this, this age thing keeps shifting. When we are young, we want to appear old. When we become old, we want to continue appearing young. So we keep lying about age. But then we have people who genuinely don't know their age. They are there in our low area. They are there in our villages. They don't know their age. So how do we cater for them? We, such people, you go there, you are a census enumerator, you are asking for information from them, and then someone tells you, ah, you know, I was born. Uh, my mother told me that that day, that year there was a flood. But you know that we get floods every year. And someone is telling you a flood. So how are you going to estimate? So luckily for some of them, they will tell you a historical event that is quite, it can be quite, it can be traced. For example, someone will tell you independence. We said that I remember Uhuru, that is independence. I was a, a little girl around I was a little girl who start measuring then you say maybe at this height someone was at four years or five years then you start estimating 1962 backwards that could be could be 57 so you and you say this is a born of 1957 some people define it depending on the historical historical events who tell you when they when they for 2000 they, 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 9-11, those when the terrorists bombed the America, I was I was in P4. So you say someone was in P4. How probably it was nine years. So you, then you count backwards. So that's how we define edge data because it's very difficult to get accurate edge data from a population. You know these days, some people unwillingly offer their edge. It 
unwillingly because people don't want to give their age. These days, if you go to register for NSSF number, people didn't know that the first digits of NSSF numbers you had the birth year. But people used to lie before this age, our ages used to appear on transcripts and national IDs. People used to lie. So we would find someone retiring at 80, and yet he was supposed to retire at 60. But he lied, he cut a whole 20 years. So how do we define age? One of them is the historical calendar method. And this historical calendar method, we compile data based on big historical events. For example, World War. Some of you could be having your father says who was, who was, alive, was living by that time when the world, Second World War, for example. We have things like the Buddha land sites. We have our brothers from Bali campus and others here on many campus who, who, who live, with, who come from the mountains of Edgon, Mount Ergon there. And so you can attribute it to Buddha land sites. And you said there was this huge landslide. And for then, for us, we shall trace which landslide is this person talking about. We have the Kampala bombings, for example. Mm. Kampala bombings. You can, it can be, it's a historical event. So the person is interviewed about the occurrence of those events and then somehow recalls. Then easy or age can be traced from that historical event. Then we have the cohort identification. Cohort in a cohort is a group of people who start and spend life together. Your P1 OB is, is your cohort. You started school together. Some of you, for example, you've moved together with that person you started with baby class. Today you are all at university. If I meet your, if I meet that friend of yours, and I ask him his or her age, then I will be able to also trace your age, because I assume that if you started baby class together, probably, probably you started baby class at four years, so I will know that if you are 32, then the other one is also likely 32 or 31 or 33, not beyond that. So that is the cohort identification. It could be that it, a cohort could be people who got married on the same day. You know, these days we have mass weddings, so you were part of a mass wedding. A cohort could be people who graduated the same year, graduated from university the same year. A cohort could be people who joined the civil service, maybe the same year. So you, you begin life and spend it together. So by tracing one member of that cohort, I am able to tell the age of the other members of that cohort. And then we have the friendship network method. I know here it's also quite complicated because some of you guys have a tendency of making friends with the children. And you'll find someone like Kizimula, Godfrey, here having a friend who is in P1, uh, P, P5. And that is the bad day they spend time with the, when, when, during holidays. So that in such a scenario, you'll find that it becomes very difficult to trace age based on friendship network. But in most cases, we assume the friendship method assumes that people of the same age tend to create to, to make friends with people who, who are equal of the same age. If you are 32, you'll find that your friends are also around the same age bracket. It's not easy for you to find you are 32 and you have friends who are 50. Of course, I am also aware that we have our some of our people here who, who, who have those people you, you always you always you give that you sugar coat the people you say sugar something sugar something so you'll find that maybe you are 25 and you have a sugar something or 55 yeah there are those ones but that i don't know that you can define that one as a friend or it's just a transaction of some sort but you realize that we, we can trust edge based on your friendship network how what are the factors influencing the edge composition of a population one of them is migration Migrations affect the age composition of the population because, like I've already told you, that the younger energetic people tend to move more than the, than the old. So you go to an area and find the very old. How many younger people are going, for example, to the Middle East to look for jobs? These ones who are working as cab drivers, security, or house helps in, in the Middle East. It's younger people, fresh graduates from university. The old ones, like us, some for us now, even if you, I wanted to go, they will not accept me because my age is also now. Uh, it's not, it's, it does not favor me. They want young people who are quite energetic and quite mobile. Then we have changes in population growth, where you can definitely have falling growth rates, which leading leading to an aging population. This is the scenario in, for example, in the Western world, where you are, you have a lot of people. Uh, taking time to produce children. People are, are getting married at 40. People are, some are not getting married at all. And then we have this devolic thing of 
of, of lesbian marriages, gay, this transgender, LGBT community. Those guys, they, they are not hurting to population growth whatsoever. They are not. So you realize in such scenarios, the younger people, people are not producing, but the population is aging. So you'll find that there are very many old people than young people in a given population. The other is mortality. Mortality can tend to, to, to affect a certain age group hmm, or a certain a certain age group or a certain gender you know very well that you hear when you reach 70 years in uganda you are the people will tell you you're living your bonus years because they think you assume that you are you are now nearing your grave but then we but you know very well that hiv used to kill people around 30 to 45 years around between there because we live reckless lives when you're at campus and i have to warn you guys if you're living reckless lives you shall bury you at 30 or 35 because some of you even don't want to know the, the, the disease will be there eating you up. The other thing is, for example, fertility. Fertility is the number of children born on average per, 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 per woman. And fertility varies from different places. Fertility is very important because it's the one which contributes to population growth. That's where population is added. If the people are few, then you you have you you the population the, 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 then if if the, the the addition in the first age group is too small then you're going to have an aging population because the people who are proceeding through these other age groups are few and you remember they go on reducing because death is there taking off numbers then we have the effects of wars you go to an area which has been affected by war like northern uganda here or you go to places like syria libya um what people who have been affected there Basically, old people, women, and children. These are the people who are highly affected when it comes to, to wars. So these issues affect the age composition of the population. How do we present population data? For example, population structure. I already told that we present population structure using a pyramid. Population pyramid. I have already posted a video on, on the platform of someone illustrating how to do a population pyramid. But population pyramid is a graph that we use to, pro to present population structure. A graph that is made up of horizontal bars. And each bar, the length of that horizontal bar usually it, 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 it indicates the number, the total number of people per that age group in a population. For example, if age group 0 to 4 has got 1 million people, then and age group 65 plus has got half a million people then the length of the bar for age group 1 0 to 4 will be longer than the length of the the, 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 the bar for the for age group 65 and plus so that's why we, we must use that's why we use these graphs because they bring it out very well and remember it gives us the opportunity to plot population total and plot age group growth because age groups are on the horizontal and on the vertical axis and then we have the population totals on the horizontal axis. And then it also gives us the opportunity to subdivide. On one side you have females and on the other side you have males. Because here you are talking about population structure and we said population structure is basically defined by two things. We are talking about sex structure and age structure. So once we divide, we have males on one side and females on the other side, then we shall be able to see and you know, like the saying goes that a picture is worth 1,000 words. So when you look at a graph like a population pyramid, you are able to ascertain the differences between different age groups in a given population. But then population pyramids also change for different countries. We have the forms of the of, of population pyramids. There are three, which are determined, and these are determined by fertility, mortality, and migration. So Age group number one, we have the broad-based pyramid, or what we call the expansive population pyramid, which shows a country in its early stages of demographic development, with high birth rate and high death rate. High birth rate contributes to the largest number of young people in a population, whereas the high death rates contribute to the small number of people in the older age groups. So you realize that this one, when you have a broad-based, it implies that the population of that nation, specific nation, is a, is a useful population and it also tends to have a low median age it's representative of age sex structure for most of the african countries because they were still in this in this stage of early demographic development then the second one we have the constructive population pyramid 
high countries with lower mortality and large proportion of people surviving to older age groups. This is what happens in the Western world where the technology has enabled people to survive to longer age groups. Because, it, because of the technology in those areas, people are surviving cancer, people are surviving all forms of illnesses, cardiac arrest, they are able to survive. So they are living up to all the age groups. They are also living under better living conditions. You know, sometimes we die early because of poverty. But these guys have lived a life where they, where they, they, they are able to, to, to have four meals a day. Because I see here in Uganda, people have one meal a day. So how do you expect to live? Up to 95 years old, when you are having one meal, you are, your body is living in a deficiency, in a deficit. So we hear that this constrictive population pyramid usually has a narrow base, and that the, the, the peak tends to expand a little bit further compared to the, to the expansive population pyramid of the African countries or the, of the, of the, of the countries with a useful population. So the infants decrease because of declining fertility. In the middle of the pyramid, the birds tend to push out a little bit, suggesting there, uh, there is a fall in birth rate, but they are more recent. There are also migrations. People are coming in and adding the population. You know, people don't migrate when they are toddlers. They migrate when they are youth. And even when you look at this population pyramid, you, you, you find ourselves growing up to 100 and plus. For most of African countries, we can't even develop. At most, we reach at 80 and plus. And then we have the migrant population pyramid, which is where the bars in the middle are pushed out, especially in the ages between 15 to 39. It suggests heavy migration of people in those age groups. Mostly males dominate the females in those age groups because the males tend to, to migrate more than the females. We have some questions for discussion there. I will use them during your free time. Like I already indicated that is online study, long distance education is more of self-study than the interactive one you've been having at campus. So for example, we have a question there with the help of illustrations explain the factors responsible for the shape of a population pyramid. You should be able to come up with those answers. Explain the uses of sex ratio at birth. The answers are there. What is the census? We defined the census last week when we covered the population census. Explain the processes of conducting a census and demographic information expected. I already told you the inform demographic information. It's age, sex, mortality, fertility, and the other social economic data that may be necessary. Comment on the methods used for measuring ages in Africa. You comment on them for I'm make, just making a comment. How effective is the historical calendar? How effective is the cohort identification? And outline the causes of errors in age collection. There are so causes of errors in age collection, for example. Hmm? These errors arise from things like uh, we have what we call age heaping. Causes of errors. We have things like age heaping, I think it's part of the next lesson that will be, I'll be recording for you. Age heaping here comes as a result of people preferring certain, you know, there's a preference of even numbers. And people want always to say, I am 16, I am 18, 20, 20, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. These are all the old numbers, 17, 19. They don't like, they don't look appealing. So people tend to heap. And, and if, if, you go, if you go by that, then it means you're going to collect all the data. So there are those issues. The causes of errors. Then there are those ones who don't know completely. You know, they are ignorant. There are no records. You know very well that here, until recently, right now there is an improvement. But there are a lot of people are still giving birth from home. Do they do? But they give birth to you at home. My mother produced eleven of us, and all of us, you know, none, none of us was given was produced in hospital. So you realize that in such a place we don't have birth records. Uh, some of you have birth certificates from your hospitals that you, you were born on this day at this hour at this. But if you go and ask my father that when was I born, he doesn't even know my age. Uh, when I was born, he doesn't know my birth date. So you realize in such cases, there are people who are ignorant. They don't have, they, no, there are no records whatsoever. So if you go there and ask, it's looking for information on age, you will get no information. Uh, there, no information will come to you. Thank you.